Welcome back everybody in this chill spotlight today we have got yeah look at that nice and green oh I'm loving it it's the hands kit 830 LN for your cheap old pleasure let's take a look I think I might have mentioned this in the last review but man oh man we are getting lots of green multimeters as of late this green just works for me it's like this green hornet thing going on I don't know but green is a go. This little beast ships via Amazon and it did not cost me an arm and a leg. No, this was cheap, cheap like borscht. 17 bucks Canadian is all the little hands can eat 30 LN set me back. So this is in the cheapo realm. The hands kit didn't ship in a box. No, it came in one of these yellow parcel wrap bags, but that's okay. It all arrived in one piece so i'm not complaining really i'm not complaining well i'm just i'm venting but i'm not complaining it's it's positive what am i trying to say anyway now let's take a look first at those test leads yeah they are rather big for such a small meter um, i was a little bit surprised to see this actually a good you know maybe one and a half times the size of the multimeter itself normally small meters get small test leads but uh hey this was not the case also, something you don't normally see in a small meter, these crocodile jacks. Um, once again, you know, <laughs> check it out. So they are literally almost the same size of the meter. Um, but hey, I'm not, again, I'm not complaining. I'm really not. This is pretty good value for 17 bucks Canadian, about 13 or so US. Hey, what can I say? And you do get that little operation manual. Take a look at that shortly. Oh yeah, something else worth pointing out is the fact you get this guarantee card. Once again, you don't normally get this with a cheap old multimeter. Uh, 12 month worry free warranty. If anything that didn't go right with our product, kindly email us. We'll be ready for you. All right, so they're ready for you. Hopefully you don't have to use it, but once again, a nice little touch from Hanskit. Awesome. Now that little meter manual, here we are. Look at that. Nice and colorful. Um, really a step up once again in terms of cheapo multimeters you don't normally get a nice pull out um, little brochure there is all of our uh, features 2000 count uh, three times per second sampling rate check it out very cool nice verbose i like it i like it a lot um, even has some notes on fuse replacing what have you so hey Kudos to Hands Kit once again. Now the boot itself, nice rubber. And it's not that cheap rubber again. They've taken it up. It's really pretty decent. That tilt stand has a uh, about a 45 degree angle, maybe more, maybe like a 60 degree angle here. Um, it's definitely offset for uh, looking at it on the bench without any difficulties. And if we take off that boot, which is pretty simple to do, you can see we've got one Phillips screw here to get to the battery housing. Speaking of battery housing, it takes two AAA batteries. Uh, yeah, so you know what? First impressions, not too shabby. When we take off the back, unfortunately, we do not have a nice threaded insert. No, it's just plastic. So metal into plastic, really not a great idea. Um, that's too bad. Let's take a quick look with that rotary selector starting off at the midnight or off position followed by volts, AC up to 600 volts. Battery tester, 1.5 and 9 volt. Current DC from 200 milliamps to 10 amps. Diode and continuity. Resistance up to two mega ohm. Finally, volts DC up to 600 volts. At the bottom, we have our high current input, which is unfused at 10 amps. In the middle, we have our common or negative input jack and finally, on the right, we have our volt, resistance, and milliamp. Already after Aphrodite, let's turn on that meter, shall we? There we are, greeted with what I would consider kind of a chunky display. Um, I'm not dissing it. It's not bad, actually. Whoa, there we are. Press that backlight. It is luminescent blue. And wow, it does not last long at all. What was that, like four seconds? Ah, geez. So generally speaking, first impressions, yeah, you know, it's a multimeter. 
It's a cheapo. It's based on the 830 series. Um, but I like it. I like it. It's got something... Mm, I can't quite put a finger on it. But you know what? Let's get down to some testing and see if it's actually any good. Okay, so I have the test leads in. Wow, yeah, they are just huge next to this meter. But um, yeah, you know what? For me personally, I will take the big leads over the small ones any day. Okay, this is our DC accuracy test. It was turned on for about 15 minutes. I had just changed the battery, but it definitely has warmed up. So let's check it out. Now remember, this is not an auto-ranging. This is a non-auto-ranging meter. So we're going to have to bring it down here. Start off with millivolts. We should be looking at 250. And what do we have? Survey says... Whoa, survey says nothing. Let's just take another look. Shall we? Wow, what the heck is going on? All right, well, let's try regular volts. Should be looking at 2.5. Okay, so we're not getting anything. Let's. So right now we're not getting anything on this multimeter. Um, looking at these leads, I noticed as well, if you can see that, that uh, input for the volts, milliamps, um, yeah, it's got a little crack on it right there. So mm, what is that all about? So I'm going to try a different set of leads. Uh, well, you know what? I got some Pro Masters handy, so what the heck? Let's see if this is going to work. Oh, look at that. So, hmm, interesting. So the leads it ships with are not working. Like, really? Hmm. Try that one more time. Yeah, it just does not want to go all the way in. So it's definitely an issue here with those input jacks. Um, as I said before, these leads just seem awfully big for this meter. No, we're not getting a good tight fit at all. Yeah, so, all right, well, we're going to use test leads that don't ship with the meter. So that is a massive strike already against this little hand skit. So let's, uh, well, you know what? Let's stick with the Pro Masters. What the heck? And let's start things going here. Starting things off in millivolts, we want to see 250, just shy 248. Take it up. Now we're going to look at 2.50 volts, we hope. And 2.47, so a few counts off it's wavering back and forth yeah take a quick look at that voltage testing mode for the 1.5 9 volt battery basically what that does is it puts a small load on the battery um, therefore it's in theory at least testing um, a little more accurately now we've got a 9 volt Duracell let's just see what we get here and it's showing us what the hell 20 volts. Let's try that again. 20.3 volts. Holy Jesus. Okay, well, Houston, we have a problem. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so this is suddenly turning into Pandora's box here. Pandora's box of horrors. And I said horrors. Um, hmm. Okay, let's just take that same battery. I'm pretty sure it's not 20 volts, but you never know. Let's see what Pandora says. And uh, yeah, so 8 volts on the low side. And I knew it was on the low side. I just wanted to have that reflected with the load test. Put it back to 9 volts. And 
now coming up is 20 volts. So uh, definite fail once again for that um, battery testing feature on the hands kit. Incredible. You know what, I thought we'd try that 1.5 volt testing feature as well. Um, hey, when in Rome, right? So here we go, got a 1.5 volt battery. Uh, I know this to be a good battery. And according to this, it is actually 37 volts. Jeez, Louise, what the heck is going on? Okay, let's take it off of that again and just do a standard voltage test. And 1.5 volts. So yeah, that, that, that battery testing feature is totally useless. Okay, we are in resistance now, and yes, I am a little nervous. So far, this is turning into a real turd. Um, yeah, well, okay, let's rel out the leads first of all. Let's see if we have any, well, we can't actually rel them out. We don't have a rel feature, but let's see if we have any resistance on these test leads. And uh, being pro masters, I know it's not the test leads, it's the meter itself. Uh, 0.3 of an ohm, okay, so uh, let's see. We've got a little fluke demo board here. It's a 0.5 ohm resistor. Um, see what weird and wonderful things are going to happen now 0.5 ohm well what do you know something actually works all right so if we take off that three brings us pretty well spot on all right now we have a pretty meager resistance range here about two mega ohms so i'll just see how fast it is to range 1.4 mega ohm 1.2 mega ohm one mega ohm that's it's it's 1.6, 600K, 100K. Yeah, well, it's, it's fast enough. I mean, you know, what the heck. Um, yeah, but a pretty meager range. Yeah, that's too bad. At least it works. Gotta say, this is definitely the first cheapo I have reviewed that is getting Pro Masters the whole review. Insane. I know. What can I say? All right, LED mode. Here we go, let's see if we can light up any of these. Starting off with the green LED. Switch these probes around. And, whoa, wow. I believe that was just barely, barely lit. Yeah, it was. Yellow, same thing, barely lit. Um, no forward voltage drop, the red, same, it's lit. The blue, nothing happening with the blue. And the white LED, same thing, nada. So, yeah, three for five in terms of illumination, um, zero for five in terms of a forward voltage drop. Ah, not really good. Didn't think it was actually that high. 2.4 volts, the output voltage in dial mode. Quick look at the high current side of things. Not really sure if you want to use the speeder for high current, but if you do, well, you know what, for you feelers, Phil? Yes, let's check it. All right, sitting at 3.66 amps right now, showing us 3.72. Bring it up, 5.42 amps, 5.5, already 7.3. And let's max it out now, 10 amps, high current, 10.35 amps, 10.54 coming up on the hands kit. Now remember, this is unfused, so you don't want to leave it on that high current 10 amp sign for too long. All right will get a little toasty but we're in there right now 10.5 amps showing up on the hands kit and it seems to be okay i'm not smelling smoke at least not yet okay let's bring it back down so in the wild world of high current it seems to be fine ac volts is next let's see if we can hit 120 volts ac and yes, 120 volts AC. Praise, praise, something works. Ah, oh, had me worried. Okay, now we're in voltage, low voltage mode, sitting at five volts even, and yeah, not too bad. 5.01 for the hands kit. Right, let's bring it down. 4.2, spot on, 3.7. Hey, looking good, 2.7 volts. Two volts even, even Steven. Wow, I'm surprised. One volt even, hey, beautiful, beautiful. 0.6 volts, 0.5, 0.10 volt, and look at that, wow. 
So for low voltage, at least, this Hanskit 830LN, whoa, don't get too excited, does the job. Alrighty, we are now in continuity. I've got those wonderful Probe Masters, my hot little hands. Yes, we are foregoing the usual uh, standard stock probes. Then the Probe Masters, no, this thing didn't work with the stock probes at all. So we're going right to the Probe Masters. Okay, three, two, one. Wow, it's lashed, it's loud. Hmm, you know what? That's pretty good. In retrospect, it'd be just a tad louder, but it is really latching quickly. Hey, good stuff. Fifty-seven point three decibels, the maximum output in continuity mode. That's really not that loud. It sounded louder. Oh, so confused. All right, taking a look at the inside, and let's start off with the rear. No shielding, hey, no surprise. We do have a piezo, and this little plastic housing is holding it all together. Um, a lot of wires here. Let's actually just lift that up for a second. Wow. So, mm, yeah, soldering leaves something to be desired. Uh, hoo hoo, okay. Starting off with the input jacks, you can see really cheesy in terms of the overall uh, metal that they've utilized for that uh, functionality. Ugh, wow, that's cheap. And the soldering job is atrocious. And we already have some oxidation going on here, and it just looks like a real mess. Whew, wow. Fab date is right there. It says 2018, uh, November 5th. Not much to speak of in terms of input protection. We do have a small diode clamp here on the high current side, as well as that current shunt. On the milliamp side, we have that 200 milliamp fuse. And on the voltage side, we do have one lonely PTC way at the top. Not much else going on. We do have one dual op amp here. That's the LM358. Now the main IC is cobbed, uh, but really that's it. That's all. There's no NCV, no flashlights, nothing fancy schmancy going on. It is a truly basic multimeter. All right, gonna put everything back together and come back with, you got it, my closing thoughts. Closing thoughts on the Hanskit 830LN. They say good things come in small packages. Unfortunately, this isn't one of them. No, pass this one by. It is kind of a turd and it's just not worth it. Not even worth 17 bucks Canadian. In terms of accuracy, it definitely is not bad. Um, it held it right down there, right down to the millivolts and milliamps. Um, that is definitely a step in the right direction for a cheapo. Fortunately, that battery testing was a real macabre. Yeah, I still can't figure that one out. Um, DOA. Unfortunately, I had a few other glitches as well. Um, I did have a couple of turnoffs just for no reason. Uh, just unacceptable. No, the Hanskit 830LN is definitely not a meter. The Hanskit 830LN gets a dismal 1.5 out of 5 stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Hey, I hope you saw that little pop-up on YouTube. Yes, there is a Sanwa special coming up in about a week. It is gonna be a week review of Sanwa multimeters. Wow, that is gonna be a lot of fun, so stay tuned for that. And the best part is at the end of the week, I'm gonna give away one of those Sanwa meters. Yes, that's right, a free Sanwa just for watching. Hey, until the next one, keep on testing.